Hello, my name is Lola, and I'm going to react to Old Abe's Exodus by Cat Icarus. This was recommended to me by Jethro Henderson. Thank you for the recommendation. And uh, yeah, this is a follow-up to uh, Abe's Odyssey. Yeah. Um, which, that game I had no idea what it's about. It's about uh, uh, this... I, I don't know. <laughs> It's just, uh, you know, like, this guy, his uh, people, and his, like, planet was taken over or something, and they put into slavery, something like that, and they're hunted down and all that for food or whatever, and, uh, yeah, let's check this out, and uh, if you want to like, comment, subscribe, my channel, you can if you want to, that's fine, too, here we go. Life fucking sucks! Work is way too hard. And whenever I relax, there's always something else running around in my head. Is the front door locked? Did I leave the oven on? Have I done enough work today? Enjoy life while you can, kids. I know school's not that great, but as soon as you get older and you have actual responsibilities, you'll never have fun again. Life is shit and nothing will ever make me change my mind. Uh, you guys are familiar with the YouTuber Caddy? Hand for Caddy, he's been a huge supporter. Thank you, man. So he sent me pictures of the tattoo, and of course I didn't believe they were real. Because I thought he just drew them on there. It was messing with me like most people do. And I said, I'll take you out to a great dinner if that's true. And then it turned out there was two, so I owe him two great dinners now. Life's fucking awesome, isn't it? What are you talking about? <laughs> I never said that. I've got three dinners out of Lord Lanning for life! Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kellekara Show, where I always have to do the deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And who here remembers all those years ago when I first did my videos on the Odd World Games? But enough stalling because there's a lot to go through, if you couldn't tell by the length of this video. So, yeah, they were very old and cringy, so I decided a while ago to redo my Abe's Odyssey video as a Kellekara episode so I could do the game a little bit more justice. But the problem with that is that I never actually followed that video up with a video about my favourite Odd World game of all time. Abe's Exodus. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I have Abe's hand tattoos from Exodus on my hands, and it's public knowledge that the game is one of my favourite video games of all time, not just in Oddworld, so why did it take me so long to go back here? Well, I'll tell you, alright? Keep your loincloths on. You see, during EGX 2017 in Birmingham last week, my girlfriend Keris and I actually spent a lot of time with the Oddworld team and Fat Kraken Studios so that they could show us a very early build of the upcoming sequel to New and Tasty, Soulstorm, the complete redoing of the classic Abe's Exodus. Yes, we are the first and only members of the public to have actually seen and had a go at the game. I feel very privileged. Either way, while we were there, I got an interview with the legendary Limitless Luscious Lawn Lanning and discovered more about Exodus itself and how it wasn't exactly the game that it was intended to be. It turned out that Abe's Odyssey was given around three years or so of development and after the sleeper hit success of the game that PlayStation wasn't actually expecting it to be, a sequel for it was heavily pushed and demanded by higher ups. So much so in fact that instead of three years of development, Oddworld Inhabitants had a grand total of Nine months to make the game. Nine fucking months. One of my favourite video games of all time took nine months to create. I always thought Naughty Dog's Crash Bandicoot games coming out on a yearly basis was impressive, but this is another level, especially considering this is literally double the game that Odyssey was. And if you missed my video on Abe's Odyssey, don't worry, because Abe's Exodus itself actually explains what happened in the last game, so let's just sit back and watch that. You should dish out some cash and go buy this stinking game. Well, fuck you then. With such a tight time scale, this did mean that a lot of assets and ideas were reused in Exodus, but despite that, damn did they deliver on one of the most impressive and expanded sequels of all time. It's a game on two discs instead of one. It lasts twice as long without a single superfluous moment. There's double the gameplay mechanics and tweaks with the same classic heavy Abe controls, possession of enemies for the sake of no weapons, and game speak still intact to communicate with your friends and solve hundreds of puzzles. This is essentially an extension to Odyssey, a full game double disc DLC to the original story, and it rocks. The additions are just everywhere. I mean, even from the main menu, you can see in the game speak section that there are many more creatures and characters to possess and communicate to others with. However, I must point out that the Scrab's power charge sounds like this. And the howl sounds like this. I think someone fucked up there. <laughs> Black sheep, have you any wool? <laughs> 
And of course, the story in this game, much like some of the assets, does hit a lot of the same beats as Odyssey, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because the FMV cutscenes are still gorgeous, and the game is still chock full of its demented overtones, twisted reflections on real life consumerism, and dark humour, which is present even in the loading screen to start the game that politely requests that you sit down and shut up! Okay, demanding that I go <laughs> buy your last game because you can't be bothered to tell me what happened in the last game was one thing, but now I'm being dictated to. I don't play video games to be insulted, I get enough of that walking down the street. Exodus <laughs> follows straight after Odyssey, assuming that you got the good ending where Abe is a hero, and then he gets accidentally knocked out, poor bastard, and so starts seeing these Madokan spirits that are letting Abe know that he may have stopped the evil Gluckins from cutting up all of his species for meat, but now they're digging up the remains of already dead Madokans for some unknown sinister purpose. But you know how Oddworld works, Madokans like Abe are the slaves of the world, so do you think that the Gluckins want them to know that they're digging up their ancestors? Of course not. Which is why they had all their eyes stitch shut. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Okay, excuse me for a second. And the disgusting thing about all of this is that after you and your posse invade the mines of Necrum to find out why the bones are being dug up, your friends start drinking a new Glucken brew known as Soulstorm after all the walking through the deserts they've been doing, which turns out to be one of the most addictive and dangerous substances in Oddworld, made out of the bones of their own dead relatives, and also, as you later discover, live Madokan tears. At least the first game didn't make these poor souls cannibalize themselves on Madokan pops, this is just sick. And this idea of a constant gift that keeps on giving, a self-sustaining, never-ending, looping economy of bribing the Dockens to work with the addictive brew, then killing them off to use their tears and bones for the brew, which is then given to more Madokan slaves to work, is so vile and gross on a torturous level that I feel wasn't quite present in Odyssey with the simple kill all the slaves for profit plot. And when you see your friends later on sick from the brew, Hi. You can't continue without their help, and so you need to call out to your inner spiritual roots yet again to prove your worth in many forgotten frightening temples in order to learn another ability to cure the sickness instead of learning an ability to destroy everything, and then head back to save your friends who are apparently so sick that they ate all of the rocks that you were climbing around on earlier. And finally, when all is said and done, you have to shut down the sinister brewery. Yes, shut down. <laughs> so yeah, see what I mean? It does hit a lot of similar beats to Abe's Odyssey, but there's enough twists in the formula that it feels enough like a continuation of Abe's quest, as well as an expansion to the utterly giant world of Oddworld. And the same can be said in the gameplay too. The delayed, weighty controls that require Abe's feet need to be in a particular position during a step in order to run and jump properly are identical to before, so if you didn't like that in Odyssey, you can suck my mullet. The rest checks out too. One hit death, slow, methodical and cinematic platforming, stealth being the main factor of gameplay alongside physical puzzle solving, and of course, turning the tables in Abe's favour as he gets into a safe enough location and possesses his enemies in order to kill everyone in his path or create a safe enough environment for the puzzles. But the thing is, all of these returning features are turned up to their natural extremes. Even possession, where it had definitely obvious safe places that the game expects you to use it in Odyssey, is nowhere near as obvious or clearly safe in Exodus, making you think tons more about the best places to use it at the right times. And just because the game plays very similarly doesn't mean it looks or sounds the same or worse, because much like all of the original high quality story FMV, all of the original pre-rendered backgrounds are once again works of fucking art. Look at them! Even as you're going back to the motif of temples infested with paramites and scrabs, they look completely different than they did in Odyssey since they're different locations, and it makes Oddworld itself feel much bigger and more mysterious than we'll ever truly understand. The new locations like the FICO train station look suitably convenient to the public, yet death and empty at the same time, the mines look totally desolate and oppressive, and the slick barracks are totally badass, looking so fucking evil and swarming with enemies and mines that it makes the threatening trenches and green, murky, dirty fog all the more horrid. And the music is still some of the trippiest and most atmospheric music you'll ever hear in a PS1 game. And hey, Abe can still speak in this game, but do you remember all the times you had to call each individual Madokan in Odyssey and painfully bring them back and forward through death traps and pitfalls in order to save them? Yeah, you don't do that anymore! Boom! You have a command that allows allows you to communicate with every Madokan on the screen at once and have them all follow you or wait at the same time, fixing all of the ridiculously frustrating repetitive moments from before and building more of the game around multiple Madokan commanding at once, since you can now tell your muds to work once they automatically stop at a wheel or switch, fixing an issue and adding more stuff to it. It's great. And what's better than all of this? Sneaking around with a group of Madokans behind you. <laughs> it sounds like the tightest leather pants in existence. Rubbing in between your thighs like a naughty doctor. By the way, you can possess nearly everything now, yeah. Not just sligs, but scrabs, paramites and gluckens, and this makes the entire idea of possession ridiculously more dynamic than the first game and changes everything level after level. I mean, yeah, even with the new enemy types like flying bomber sligs, the sligs are still... <laughs> Right?
fucking stupid. But the rest give you even more puzzle types with the new control styles and mechanics, new methods of communication or domination over other creatures, new ways to scout ahead, and new multiple choice ways of solving the same puzzles, with my favourite moments being when you possess Gluckens near the end of the game. Since Gluckens really look like this under their suits, they can't do anything, you see, so the gameplay with them revolves around you possessing someone that you can then command another thing that you've possessed in the past to sacrifice themselves, pull switches, and kill things that usually only ever mean that you run away from when you play as Abe. Does anyone else here as well love the noises Sligs make whenever they use a teleporter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it cracks me up. How more displeased could you sound about such amazing technology? <laughs> and in what other video game can you drink a brew, fart, and then possess your fart, make it fly around the level like a fucking helicopter, and then make it explode at your will? Yes, I didn't make that up. This is a legit thing in the game, and it's so absurdly brilliant, I must heavily disagree with this demotivational meme. Half the heart, but twice the flavor. Nah, man, how could you say that with this kind of gameplay, eh? And if you're wondering why Abe himself doesn't get sick from drinking any Soulstorm brew, it's because he's blue, da boo dee da boo die. Let's not forget the other new enemy types as well as flying slugs, like fleeches that climb up ledges and slowly eat you, slurgs that just get in the way and wake up things around you if you step on them, greeters that were vending machines gone horribly wrong and now act as guards that kill anything that moves in their laser vision, and my favourite, the sloggies, which I should be freaked out by, but god damn it, there's so much horror! Exodus has the same imagination and terrifying design quality as before, and you even get a chance in the slig barracks to actually see some slugs before they get their metal pants on. You can even possess them if you'd like, but what they can actually do leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> and let's not forget the Madokans also had emotions this time. And it was brilliant! Wait. No, no. Yes, not only can you command a Madokan group and get them to follow and work for you, but check it. It turns out that their years of torment, abuse, and humiliation has actually made them pretty pissed off about things. Angry Madokans tend to never listen to your commands and find themselves randomly slapping others and pulling death trap switches without caring. Depressed Madokans also don't listen to you and just slowly bumble around, but be careful not to get too aggressive with them or else they'll never follow you at all. And to fix these states, you simply need to run up to them, sympathize with them in a new game speak command. Hi. Okay. Or tickle their noses, whatever works for you, and then you'll be off. Wired Madokans are much harder to work with, though. Going crazy on happy gas and running around and laughing like insane clowns with no regard for sleeping enemies or traps alike. So to fix them up, you need to use another game's big command, a well-timed slap, to get them back into reality. Don't do it again, though, or they'll get angry and hit you back. Sick Madokans need healing from a special chant and just do this. <laughs> and what I love is that sometimes the muds aren't just found like this, but can also be made into one of these states by you, depending on the order in which you solve particular puzzles. So whenever you feel yourself accidentally getting a Madokan wet, or filling a room full of gas in order to proceed, just make sure that you're prepared to deal with the consequences. And even though it's not an emotional state, it's still another type of Madokan to deal with. Yes, you also have to sort out the blind ones. <laughs> Okay, Lorne, you're a sweetheart and everything, but now I have to go and change my pants again. Fuck you. And obviously they can hear you, but not see where they're going. So getting them to move and then wait around drills and mines can often make your palms sweat. Or not, because you could always laugh at them when you try rescuing them and watch them run and jump into a wall. I mean, if you're sick. I don't find it funny. I'm nice. Secrets are also extremely well hidden, but well hinted at the same time, really rewarding those with keen eyes. And if you see empty Soulstorm bottles or some rubble dripping from the ceiling or below your feet, you know that there might be something worth finding and more Madokans worth saving. And these feel similar to Abe's Odyssey secrets, but nowhere near as cryptic, and actually do give more logical indications, as well as much more challenging surprises waiting for you on the other end. Okay, I need to deactivate these mines. Oh, come on, do it, do it quickly. Oh, they're gonna get grounded up if I'm not quick. Oh, okay, okay, all of you, all of you, come here. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Follow me. <laughs> Damn, no, shit. I'm so no. sorry, man. Well, hey, at least you made it out. Oh, wait, no, no, what are you doing? No, are you hitting yourself? Stop it, no, what are you doing? What are you... No! Suicide? I have to deal with that as well? Oddworld, come on now. This isn't just odd anymore. You've reached the realm of being a dick. You should rename yourself Dickworld. No! It goes without saying, absolutely, that with all of these new mechanics, new game speak abilities, and new emotions to work with, that Exodus is much, much harder than Odyssey, especially when trying to get the minimum 150 Madokans for the good ending. Yeah, there's 300 to save here. Odyssey only had 99. That's how much bigger this game is. And the game doesn't skimp out on enemy numbers, near impossible situations, and extremely tense timed puzzles. The slugs in the barracks especially fire towards you the second they hear any kind of noise. There are more puzzles with alarms and mines involved, and far too many moments to count 
with you just making it through a situation saving your friends from drills, or pulling a guarded switch before slinking back into the shadows. Dude, that was so close! So do you know what the team did to counteract this and not make this more frustrating than the original game? Quick save! At any moment of the game, you can quickly pause and create your own checkpoint after a death or quick reloading point without the tediously slow game saving in the memory card system, and this is one of the best and most welcome additions to the formula anyone could have wanted. I mean, this game is so brutal sometimes it certainly needed it. Even here I get shot and then blown up. How gruesome. <laughs> But yeah, there are two discs here this time, so when I say this is literally double the game as before, it is. And yes, even Lorn himself admitted in my interview, which will be done very soon, okay, that there were a lot of recycled things in order to squeeze the game into a nine month development cycle, even including enemy characters that weren't meant to look the same, but due to limitations, they had no choice but to replicate them with stretches and bulges and such. And yeah, since there's not only twice the game, but twice the gameplay possibilities, this is not a problem as far as I'm concerned. There are so many more disparaging moments between moods of the game as well. Tons of quiet, slow, contemplative and tense scenarios that are followed up by frantic and panic inducing moments moments, like the fleet just chipping off Abe's invisible health bar a tiny bit at a time, and you only have Abe's scream going up in pitch as an indication how close you are to death and how much you need to rush before- <laughs> And yes, Paramites and Scrabs are still terrifying, especially when you go from the slower puzzle-solving moments with them straight into the nasty chases with them as they unexpectedly charge out of the shadows or eerily crawl into the frame, ready to eat you. And the same exact screen wipe effect, giving your eyes a chance to glance and absorb the immediate next screen in time for your next action is just as helpful as before in these moments. Once you do reach the last third of the game as well on your way to destroy the brewery forever, possessing all of the Gluck and higher-ups in order to shut down the security gates and kill all of the lackeys makes you feel like real shit is going down. You're possessing the biggest, baddest creatures of them all in Oddworld at this point in time. Abe isn't fucking around anymore, and it really feels like it. Leading to an utterly epic and adrenaline-pumping timed final mission in order for you to escape before blowing it up. And it all works as well as Odyssey's ending of killing all of the Glucken board members, but in a different kind of way. And yes, it does feel epic, despite the fact that as a Glucken, you are diddling around with tiny feet and leaping around like a springy poo. And hey, if you ever wanted to slap a slig while you're invisible, you can do that now. <laughs> and as I said at the beginning of this video, this is one of my favourite video games of all time, so obviously it gets the salvage today. But I'm not just going to send it up to the heavens, no. I love this game too much and I'm too excited for Soulstorm, so do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to treat this game and let it fuck my shelves. <laughs> what am I even doing with my life? Yeah, anyway, the Oddworld EGX video that I'm working on will be done very soon, so please stay tuned for that. And until next time, if it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful. Ay, 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 subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and please consider supporting the show on Patreon if you'd like to get your names in the credits or have 24 hour. <sighs> Yeah, like I said in the, the uh, Odyssey video, like uh, I've never, I have never heard of this game, and uh, it surprised me to learn that that wow, this game actually is looks pretty good, you know. And uh, man, Exodus is way better. Like what? And uh, you know, it is horrifying, man. Like that freaking like you know, stitching the eyes shut and finding out that oh, you're drinking the remains of your relatives have died like what <laughs> and honestly i i can't even name another game that uh you know where like you control your own fart like what <laughs> i don't know any any other game that does that and uh obviously uh you know it's it's caddy's most you know favorite uh video game franchise um you know with the uh, abe's uh odyssey and exodus uh of course and uh and of course from i think um uh, from his uh i can't remember which one it was it was 2020 or 21 his uh from his uh from his uh his caddy plays Video. One of them, I found out that uh, that oh, Caddy's actually like he's uh, he's in the game. Like he his like uh, like his voice comes on. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And uh, uh, yeah, it's not every day that like oh like you know like you you have a favorite like 
video game, TV show, movie, and then all of a sudden, like, they're like, hey, man, like, you want to come on and, you know, be a part of it? How could you not say no, dude? How can you, how, how are you going to say no to that? Like, you know, if it was me, like, uh, you know, I would have been like, oh, hell yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my reaction to Old Abe's Exodus by Cat Icarus. And uh, everyone, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.